two things I'm going to get started there. Number one, this is the first thing to Thank you for spending your time with us. We recognize we have a lot to do, and we're so grateful. Number two, I want you to pretend like it's you and me for the next 20 minutes. And we're going to go and demo. I don't have any slides to tell you, but we're going to go through demo now. I'm actually going to demo on my data, like my real data. Uh, sometimes it's going to mess up. And sometimes it might even show you stuff I'm not supposed to show you. If that happens, I'm going to tell you to bust your eyes over the sun and wall or something like that. So let's get started. I'm going to start very, in a very, very basic place and take us all the way back to a track you can see to get started. I recognize that in this room, we have a lot of people with a lot of different levels of experience with the technology itself. And I'm going to start from the very beginning. I think that's the first time that you saw trying to continue and start doing something, perhaps a party trick. We're going to start there. I also will go back and forth between a whole bunch of different prompts that I'm going to be looking at mostly so you don't have to watch me type. So let's talk for a moment about GPT, what's called 3.5. I'm going to ask a very simple question. What can you tell me about elephants? Now, the reason I do this is I just want to explain conceptually, just to review for a moment, what are these large language models, what we today call foundational models? In essence, what they are is that they have taken the information that's been organized into knowledge by people through the written word, and they have processed that written word and created a conceptual view of the world. So now, Based on the tremendous amount of training data that we've dumped into these things, they can tell you about just about any topic that an educated college university grad would be able to tell you about. So let's start with what can you tell me about elephants? Now, be clear, we never trained this specifically on elephants. We just gave a lot of different materials, and it turns out that elephants were mentioned. And so, as you can see here, it knows a lot about elephants. It can tell me a bit about species, about size, about lifespan, physical features, social structure. And basically, you can see that the neural network that is an LLM has taken, again, the written word and tried to conceptually create an understanding of the world around us. It's based on that written word. Now, over the last 12 months, what we learned about the LLM is that the knowledge is out there. They can actually reason. Sometimes in the industry it's called influence. I like to think of it as simply speaking. They can not only tell you about a topic, but they can apply their knowledge of about many topics to solve problems. Let me give you an example. We'll move from a simple prompt to this prompt. Could an elephant pull my tundra? How would it work? Well, I drive a Toyota tundra. And I've always wondered if an elephant could pull it. And here we will ask it. Now, one of the most amazing things that we to understand is that we're not talking about some large landmass, the Tundra, but the Toyota Tundra. It understands the context of what's happening. And then it gives me this reason to answer it. I just don't want to an elephant to pull a Toyota Tundra into the modern vehicle on its own. And then it goes on. You know, some reasons why an elephant could effectively pull a vehicle like a Tundra, and it gives me this view. Traction, weight distribution, vehicle resistance, practicality. It goes on and reasons across what it knows about the various topics, puts those things together, and does its best to explain it. Even if it were somehow possible for an elephant to move a car, it would not be practical. It's just a method of transportation. Thank you. I've never thought of that before. As we've been working with these models, we have been understanding what the good things are about them and what they're not. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Okay. Now, let's ask another question. Here we'll get to more of a factual question for a moment. I'm going to go to December 2023 and ask a little bit about the, the jobs report from the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Let's see how it answers. Hmm. That's interesting. I apologize, but I don't have access to the real time of future data. It turns out that this knowledge cut off that this training date was January of 2022. So you can't tell me much about what happened in December of 2023. That was the state of the art roughly about 12 months ago. We had the equivalent of a college educated thinker, but unfortunately didn't have access to current or recent information. Well, we addressed that with something that we call grounding, or sometimes it's called retrieval augmented generation. I'm going to move over to Copilot, where I'm going to issue that same exact query. What can you tell me about the December 2023 draft report from the 
Zero on the English statistic. I'm just a co-pilot at Microsoft.com. You can try this yourself. And we'll see something happen here that's really interesting. Um, it will stay searching for that particular report. It will find that report, and then it will give you a view of the report. You can look at the source here. It went to the actual BOS.gov website to find that source. You can see, for instance, the total non-farm payroll employment rate by 260,000. That's the unemployment rate for the number of changes of 3.7%. And it has some references, which are very interesting, that take us directly to some source data that we can look at. This pattern that we just saw is what is called risky wild regeneration. It's the idea that we can take what is essentially effectively is a burden that can do some thinking that's fairly well educated. We can go out and get the most recent data. We can pull that data together in what we now call in the industry a context window, and we can take the question and the context window and push it against the LLM and ask it to reason. And that's exactly what we get here. Now, this opens up all sorts of amazing possibilities. We can apply that basic structure, that basic pattern to business. We certainly can apply it to your sector, to the work that you do, the missions that you pursue. It's an interesting thought exercise to think what would I now do with synthetic reasoning? We like to think of this as a general purpose reasoning engine and an idea. What problems could I solve? All right, let's continue. We know over the course of the last few months to see what has started to become of all of this. So now I'm going to give a different question. Can you give me a graph of the jobs report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics over I think it's the last few quarters? So we will ask that question. We're going to handle this actually changing right now every day. It's a little bit different, but it will go out and find that information that we're looking for. I can provide you with a summary, however, I'm unable to generate or display graphs directly. You can find detailed graphical representations of employment data that gives you a reference there. Um, but you can push it. And I'm just going to push it. Wait a second. I thought you could code. Can't you generate the Python code that would take that data? Continue to go back and forth on what we think of as an iterative process to get to 
where we want to be. All right, that's the basics of what we did. I guess go through the concepts we have. Since we're the underlying LLM model, we learned that it can spit out facts, we learned that it can reason, we learned that with the rag pattern, you can see the additional data, we learned that with this augmentation pattern, you can see the additional skills. Wow. All of a sudden, you have a little bit of a system that can do pretty amazing things with the voice to your organization and your mission. Let's take you over then into Copilot for Microsoft 365. Here, we're going to see those same types of concepts, but applied to your data. In this case, it will be my data. Remember, if I say I'm virtualized, I'm not going to be looked that way, I'm not going to be looked that way. I'm going to start very quickly um, with a general prompt here. Um, what's the latest for the room? I did a forward slash, but you know what I'm talking about it up here. Kanban is on my team, organized by the email, speaks that, and how about documents? Okay, so let's works for me. He works on a research team. Uh, he actually lives in the UK, and he's been hard at work looking at the quantitative and qualitative measures of what Copilot can do. It is now going out to use that basic pattern to grab it from all there we go. I'm sorry, I couldn't find any recent emails, so I found a couple of recent documents authored by Alexia Kimball. One is the Excel file, and it looks like the other is a PowerPoint presentation. That's interesting. Wait a second. I'm sorry, you could find an email. Can you search my email again? Sometimes it can help to try harder to give it a little bit of encouragement. I'm not joking. It actually does. It does. I'm not going to try to figure out why that's the, the case, but it actually does sound like it's right now. There you go. Wait a second. Oh, I found several recent emails from Alexia. It says the most recent one was sent yesterday, yesterday evening. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, this is much more like a person than you think. It's kind of about what you see here, however, is that it's going into your information, finding that information, giving you a summary of that information, and giving, giving you references that you can go to to find the actual information. This rag based uh, approach, this pattern, doesn't entirely remove the information, but it does mean that it includes a lot less. Uh, we talk about it being sometimes usefully wrong, which means it doesn't want to make up things in the context of what you think to it. Sometimes it does get things wrong, and so we tell people continue to use your brain. You have to continue to look at what's coming to it. Okay, so here's one of my favorites to do. Uh, I do this at my own peril. Can um, you summarize the last five emails from my boss? Uh, all right. To be specific, for the last five emails from me over the last 24 hours, is stack rate in order. Most important, the least important, based on your analysis of the contents, this is always a really good view of how my boss is doing and sending me important things. Uh, it should access my email here. We'll see how it does. And if and when it finds that email, it understands my boss's name is just Murray. He's the chief marketing officer here at Microsoft. And it says, I did find five recent emails from your boss for the past 24 hours. Here's a summary. Um, and here you go. He sent an email with the subject video driven product. We're talking about video generation right now. He sent an email about Copilot Pro, Copilot for Microsoft 365. That should not surprise you at all. He sent something about some deep immersion sessions we're doing on IP, for science, chemistry, and biology. And it looks like we have some security work that we're doing. So you can do a for in your ability now to perform tasks that perhaps you've never seen done before. For well, many people, this idea that you could query your information using a profile like this is just totally foreign. I'll show you one last one here as we move on to one or two other things. Uh, let's try this. Um, that's a good one. So let's try this. For two of my meetings this week, Three to five different categories that describe how I spend my time. For each category, go back to the short description and give me an approximate percentage of time that I spent there. I think people don't even think about these types of prompts being how they would do their work. Now, work. now this particular prompt we're still working on, it's not perfect. Copilot uh, is learning how to think about time in your calendar and how to do math, all sorts of things. But based on the information I have, we have over 50 million studies for this week after analyzing the subject of content meetings that categorize them into the following five categories. I do have this crowd of what turns out that's not so interesting. I do give speeches and presentations. I meet with my teams. Uh, 
Jewish man. I went to Seattle Temple this morning, it turns out. But wow, Bob's perspective. Bob's perspective. General purpose was the engine. And did that. That's impressive if you think about his ability to do things. Very impressive. Okay, we're going to go in. I'm going to now transition from just the generalized chat experience that you're seeing here over into some of the apps. My favorite app to show is Teams. I like to show this particular app. Oh my gosh. It's going to blow up on me here. I like to show, let me see if I can just. Okay, that comes back up over here from the side. I like to show this particular app because we're looking now at what we're calling meeting and recap. This is a fictitious meeting, so I really don't need to trace this with us to here. A fictitious meeting that might be recorded is 30 minutes long where they were talking about the launch of a product that we called Project Falcon. Now, this recap was based on the recording which I have access to here. I can see the speakers who were involved in the interview or when they spoke. I can look at the topics that were discussed. I can even get, if you're old enough, to remember the DVD chapter is it you used to be able to skip the two chapters in DVD? Yes, I know. Hard to remember, but there it is. Together with the timestamp associated with those. It gives you meeting notes. It gives you a summary to follow up to us. But the best thing about this is your ability to hear and co pilot about the meeting. Just think of the meetings you won't have to go to any longer. I love it. I love this. So I'm just going to say a query here to show you what this is all about. We're just going to look at a couple of them quickly. For instance, I can ask it, and I'll say, great to meet with the actions and owners in the table from this 30 minutes of discussion. It says, sir, you know, here the, the table of actions and owners that I extracted from the text. I asked another interesting question. Was there any tension in the meeting? How did you detect that tension? Yes, there was some tension in the meeting. I detected that tension by the following clues. Jason's reaction on the suggestion of the red orange by the mouse. Are you kidding me? And we can't do it now in a frustrated tone. And then he goes on, Charles and Raymond, saying it would throw everything out of the window. But, you know, some more noise, if I can help it. Sorry, I might come up a couple times. Showing that it really understands human emotion. And he's a really interesting one. The whole idea behind this meeting was my team talking about when was the best time to actually announce the new product. So I can ask co pilot, based on the transcript, when would you recommend that we announce the product and why? And it says, based on the transcript, I'd recommend we announce the product on September 3rd because it will be a close of the launch on September 5th. It would give us enough time to do product testing and search by August 29th. It would allow us to have a full day of rehearsals with Paul, our CMO, on September 2nd. It would avoid any potential issues with any of our CEOs traveling to Tokyo and it's a board meeting on September 4th. Wow. Right? Wow. Sometimes, and by the way, this is fantastic and it's statistical. It gives you different answers each time or different reasoning a little bit. And you know, sometimes it actually will even say, I'm worried about feelings jet lag. No joke. Yeah, I can't make this stuff up. Like, wow, I never thought about my CEO's jet lag. I don't know. It doesn't occur to me. But interesting to see it moves in a 30 messy minutes of people talking to each other to get to a business outcome. All right, my time's almost up here for the most and I'm going to be able to email. Yes, this is my email inbox. Here we're going to look at a thread that is fixed. This so this is a thread like everybody gets. Somebody sends me something, somebody replies, somebody else replies. It's only 15 minutes and it's like a few days by. It happens all the time. Well, my favorite thing to do is to get this little button. Summary by Copa. You're going to love this button. Summary by Copilot will go in across the thread. It used that same line pattern or single on many generations, and it will summarize what's happening in the thread. This was this included the first draft of a blog which requested feedback from these folks. Teresa did this, the meeting was set up, Teresa did that. Leslie is now waiting for a thumbs up from John Freeman before sending to Jason to post on the day of the event. Not bad. Very good summary. Now when you want to reply, you can see just the reply. And after reading the thread, it actually will give you a couple of different options here on how to reply. You can approve it and praise it. You can suggest my edits. You can request major changes. Or you can do a custom prompt. I'll do a custom prompt. Approve it. Celebrate work. Be warm. Be a little funny. That's good enough for me. There we go. We'll pass it to generate. Now, here's the truth of what I'm experiencing as I use this. I'm finding that the thing I need to dash off really quickly, no reason for me to use Copilot. I can do 
quickly. But the place where I have to use brain, I need to be particularly sensitive. I need to think about, you know, how I would deal with an issue and make this experience for the future. The next thing that came up with, I just put, so I just reviewed the blog, and it's been great. You all have done some fantastic work, and I did my final start to find out, keep up the amazing work, and we'll celebrate this in virtual high fives. That's not as fun as I wish it were.